Money is also a form of necromancy. It's taking a dead president, which is what's on the bill, because the value of the, the dead president is what is the note that is being exchanged. He's got his signature on there, which is the two dimensional imprint or two, two D imprint of him. Right. And then now this is become, this has become an exchange for energy, which is money, but more importantly, it becomes an integer to, to, to it, money is an integer to, to demarc death or debt. Debt is death. Okay. So very simply, the debts that people are accruing, the money, okay, so mo to really understand money is to really understand that money's value is based on debt. This is why someone who has, let's say they, they have a, a mortgage, okay? So they have a 30-year mortgage. Let me just explain this very simply. Maybe they owe $500,000, right? So they take that mortgage out initially, and now they owe $500,000. As time goes on, the value of that $500,000 becomes less and less and less and less because the value of money becomes a different denomination. So $500,000 in, in 1980 is, is not worth the same as $500,000 in 2021, right? $500,000 in 1980 is worth way more or more than it's worth in 2021. So see, money is constantly depreciating. So that means that this system, the way that the rich stay rich is that they borrow off of their riches. They borrow and they, they borrow off of their debts. It's just the, if those who are, are mathematicians and really understand money, they, they understand this in money. I found a video that explains this in debt, but just to understand that the reason why they're already always taking on debt is because they know that basically the old money that they owe is worth less than the new money that they can borrow. So people who basically have saved a lot of money, especially if it's fiat, have saved something that is becoming progressively worth less and less. So what rich people, quote unquote, have done is they borrow new money all the time pay off old debts, which are worth, worth less, and then keep all their commodities and borrow against their commodities. So what this ultimately is, is it's a debt-based system. Anyone who gets in it basically starts getting in debt. And so how necromancy comes into this is because when you, as we mentioned, when you're leaving the world or even in the world, forget leaving the world, but when you're in the world and you're in debt, that debt is to someone or something. A sovereign is not in debt. A sovereign doesn't owe anybody. So that's what I was saying about these terms. Like it's a process to become a sovereign and it eventually involves you getting away from money and using a sovereign system of, which is generally private of transaction. So that way you're not getting hit with the reflux currents and the spells that are surrounded by the talismans that they're using because they're still using one of the most debased forms of Goetia and necromancy because it's being used for something external. It's not being used to ferry or guide a soul that may be lost on the astral plane and needs to understand the next bridge to the light wave that they need to catch next. It's about, it's opposite to that. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Money is opposite to that. It's about basically making a person completely detestable and not even being aware that there's even a spiritual world or that they don't even care about all this stuff.